Welcome to Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 2016 re-release of the IM-99 Bullmark, a ground-to-air guided missile in 156 scale by Ravel. It's model kit number 85-1806, and it's a skill level 5 kit requiring glue and paint. It's recommended for ages 14 and up. The pieces are molded in gray and with water slide decals, and there's 61 pieces to the kit, and the instructions are very well laid out. Now, the IM-99 Bullmark was created for air uh, defense at eight operational sites in the U.S., and these were phased out by 72 due to the threat changing from bombers to uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, a few of the Bullmarks are still around in museums, however, and Ravel brought the kit back, which was originally released in 1958, and the new boxing duplicates the original art and the original tooling. When you're done, overall dimensions are length uh, approximately 7.5, width 4.25, and, and height 12.5 inches. Here are the contents of this kit, and I'm going to call this my version of the open box review. I could pick up every piece and try to describe it and, and come up with some words like some of the other reviewers do, but that won't help you build the kit. So follow along and also pay heed to the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines for any of the products that you see here in the review. Here are the decals for this kit, and I'm sure they're very much improved over the 1958 version. But um, as always, you might want to consider using some of the uh, aftermarket setting solutions to make sure they conform to the contours and stick well. And we'll be using Model Master's uh, liquid cement for most of construction, sometimes super glue for strength, and occasionally where there's uh, clear parts we'll use some white glue. You can see that there are also some uh, Canadian markings uh, for this uh, kit because uh, some of them were based up there. So grab these parts from the kit to assemble the missile. And the fuselage is assembled uh, from the bottom to the top, and then the vertical stabilizer will be attached to the top of the fuselage. Then the, fu the fuselage assembly um, uh, is starting to take shape, and the tail cone uh, is added. Then the nose is uh, added as well. And the left and right horizontal stabilizers and then the vertical stabilizers uh, they will be added to the end of the missile. So of course you'll find some uh, flash on this old kit. Uh, as I mentioned, I don't think the tooling has changed, but you'll just have to cut that off and then sand it smooth. And uh, we'll eventually be working with the uh, seam and the fuselage as well. So go ahead and do some of the cleanup here. Now there's a sticker uh, on the interior of the top of the fuselage, and you can peel that off if you like. Um, in addition to the ejector pin marks, you'll find that uh, there's a copyright script uh, that uh, has been imprinted on the left horizontal stabilizer, and it's molded right in. So you'll have to use a hobby knife to uh, you know cut some of that off and then sand it smoothly. Uh, just be careful, don't to remove any of the details there from the rivets and panel my lines. And I used a black marker here so that you can see where it's at. Putting the fuselage halves together, um, I then used a couple of rubber bands, you know, to hold that uh, together uh, tightly until the glue dried. You just watch, make sure that the seams are matched up as well as you can uh, get them. Now, once they're uh, good and set, to go ahead and address the seam uh, on the fuselage, the you know that splits the, that uh, goes together, uh, with some sandpaper and some filler. Um, use your favorite filler. I use a 3M Automotive. Uh, Bondo, really, uh, patch putty for a glazing compound to use for fillers. Now we're going to work with the top wing, and uh, there's some flash on that uh, part that will need to be removed uh, before it's painted. So go ahead and remove the flash from the edges there and clean that up with a sanding stick uh, and get that prepared for paint. Now we can begin to apply some paint to the uh, model. And the, the a fuselage assembly is painted uh, gloss black. The tail cone is a uh, flat gray and, a, and attached there to the fuselage assembly. The nose is painted a flat tan before it's attached to the fuselage. And then the left horizontal and right horizontal stabilizers and the vertical stabilizer are painted gloss white before they're attached to the uh, uh, fuselage assembly or after. Uh, it's your choice here. And... Uh, 
it's just easier to do before but uh, you can also do it when it's in this state so now I'll assemble these pieces into the uh, engines uh, and uh, they'll both be uh, uh, put together and then painted silver and the nose cone is placed into the engine uh, bottom there and then the uh, left engine top is attached to the engine bottom trapping the engine nose cone into place and then repeat the process for the right engine now the top wing is attached to the fuselage assembly and the left and right wings are attached to the top wing and then the left and right engine assemblies are attached to the fuselage now the top wing you know can be attached and, and it's painted gloss black and the left and right wings are painted with uh, the uh, testers uh, used uh, gloss white with the uh, base coat uh, dry you can apply the decals and these will get a little tricky uh, once again I strongly suggest some setting solutions uh, are used to uh, apply them and uh, you can use the call outs and the box art or follow along with this uh, uh, photo here to know where the decals will be located as was uh, practice uh, in the early days uh, some of the markings are actually uh, scribed onto the body so you can either paint those decals by you know uh, or or just apply the decals into position there now we'll start construction on the missile launcher and uh, attach the uh, top to the bottom for the uh, missile launcher there and then the front and the rear of them are attached to the uh, that assembly then the pivot rod is attached to the top and the missile launcher assembly gets painted uh, flat gray and then detailed with some uh, model master graphite metallic some gloss orange and some silver as shown the right hydraulic cylinder is attached to the left one and then the cylinder assembly uh, gets painted flat gray and it's snapped into place on the pivot rod without glue get these parts out for the cabin wall and then uh, the, the left and right cabin wall and the launcher arm pivot block are painted uh, testers gray and assembled and the blast shield base is then sprayed uh, gloss black and the cabin wall the left and right wall are then installed onto the missile launcher as assembly uh, by the rear uh, launcher area and the blast shield base is attached to the box that is created from the cabin walls uh, so the launcher arm pivot block is then attached to the missile launcher assembly in front of the blast shield assembly now we can work on the elevator and uh, the elevating piston gets painted tester silver and then it's put on the post of the right elevating rail without glue and the left rail is attached to the right rail locking the uh, piston into place then the um, rail is painted testers gloss yellow and front clamp housing and rear and both of the sides are painted gloss yellow and the clamp housing sides are then attached to the front clamp housing without glue now uh, the rear clamp housing is attached to the front housing and that locks the clamp uh, housing sides into place the clamp housing assembly is detailed with some gloss black and then both the launching arm cradles are painted gloss yellow and detailed with a little black as you can see and both launching arm uh, and then uh, both of them are attached to the uh, rail assembly and the missile support blast shield is attached to the uh, rail support and then the, the uh, left side and the right side are attached to the rail support too the missile launch rail support assembly then is painted gloss yellow and attached to the elevating rail now, as you can see here uh, some of the um, connecting parts for the uh, launch mechanism have considerable amount of flash on them so you have to uh, trim those off with uh, a sharp hobby knife blade carefully and then to give the rail assembly a more realistic look I used a little uh, Tamiya basic putty to uh, eliminate the uh, glue seam there and there's a small indent on the uh, right elevating rail that I also corrected in the same way uh, and then I painted the parts uh, gloss yellow grab these parts to start assembling the compressor and then the uh, the two halves of the compressor are um, assembled together and painted silver and then the the pump box uh, lid is attached to the box and then uh, that assembly is painted uh, flat gray the uh, instrument panel is flat gray and detailed with a little uh, flat black and then the compressor pipe uh, is painted silver so add the compressor tank and the pump box assembly and the instrument panel 
then to the left side of the top of the missile launcher and then the compressor pipe is attached to the panel uh, back and the compressor tank top. Now you can add your decals to the rest of the uh, model uh, as shown in the uh, instructions or as you can see them here. And then you're just about ready to round things up. Uh, decals 11, 7, and 8 are go on the instrument panel. Now we're going to uh, assemble the platform. So the um, outer brace and the rear platform brace and both short side braces and the front one and the long side platform brace are attached to the top and then the platform assembly is painted gloss orange. To get these parts uh, for the railing and the figures and then the left and the right are attached to the uh, stairs and the stair assembly is then painted silver and the nailing crewman gets detailed with some skin tone you know for the face and uh, some white and some semi-gloss black. Uh, you can see that the flat black is on there uh, also uh, before being attached to the platform top. And the standing crewman is um, painted pretty much in the same manner. Um, the hat is semi-gloss black and the skin tones again for the uh, skin. So there you have it. This cool looking blast from the past makes a great shelf display. In fact, it's almost like a diorama in a box. So, it did have a few small imperfections with flash and ejector pin marks, but I'd still recommend it to collectors, especially those that like uh, military history. Uh, the subject matter is excellent, and it was pretty fun to build. There weren't any uh, real difficulties with it. Now, the decals can be a little uh, picky, but um, I, I would recommend that uh, just about any moderately uh, skilled builder could put this together successfully. So if I were you, I would buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope you've enjoyed this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and, as always, at our website, www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!